The following is a paid program for Passionist Communications. Welcome, everyone, to our celebration of the Sunday Mass, a ministry of the Passionist community. As always, my name is Father Paul. It is March 3rd, uh, the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so if you have your prayer guide, take it out, turn to the eighth Sunday, and let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you today. And with your spirit. And as we come together to celebrate the, this wonderful gift of our faith, let us pause and prepare our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken... The husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As a test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lord, it is good, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. 
Lord, it is good. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this, which is corruptible, clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this, which is mortal, clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like the teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, and then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree to know its own fruit, for people do not pick figs from a thorn bush, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in their heart produces good. But the evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You know, I'm not sure anybody would argue with me when I say we live in a negative world, uh, particularly over the last few years. We seem to have gotten more and more focused on the negative of life. Now, there are probably many reasons, uh, but that's our reality. Now, we're not unique in that. Uh, I, I think over the, the, the period of, of our history as a world, there have been cycles when uh, culture, society, uh, peoples have fallen into this negativity. Maybe it, it, it's more pronounced today because of our technology, uh, because of the way we can communicate with one another so quickly and sometimes so anonymously. Uh, we, we can say something negative about another person or a group of people or a situation, 
and really not have to take ownership of it. Uh, we can blame. Uh, we can point fingers. Uh, that's just where we are at this time. And, and throughout these uh, weeks of ordinary time that are leading us into uh, the celebration of Lent, which begins next Sunday, uh, we, we've been challenged by, by our scripture. You know, a few weeks ago, we had the Beatitudes from uh, Luke's gospel. And each week, there, there, there seems to be a lesson uh, about our relationship with God, how, how to be in that relationship, and what that relationship can do for us. You know, in our opening prayer for Mass today, there was a little line that caught, it, caught my attention in preparing. And, and the line says, In the course of our world... May, be, may it be directed by a peaceful rule. And I don't think there would be anyone who would disagree with me today and say, gee, we, we would like the world to be a little bit more peaceful. We would like the church to be a little bit more focused on its devotion, on its relationship with God. Instead of, of being caught up in the negativity and the sinfulness and the struggle of life that we seem to be in at this time. There's a quote from Mother Teresa, Sister Teresa of Calcutta, as she's more formally known. And I've gone back to it many, many times. And her quote is, I used to believe that prayer changes things. But now I know that prayer changes us, and we change things. And I really think that that's what our scriptures are getting at today. Whether it's the reading from Sirach, whether it's uh, the reflection by St. Paul, or whether it's Jesus in our gospel to Luke today. They're sort of reminding us that change starts with us. Sure, we have petitions, we, we, we offer prayers, we ask God for things. But ultimately, what that prayer hopefully is doing is connecting us in our relationship with God. Making God more present to us and us more present to God. And, and hopefully, if we do that, then change can happen. And we can move beyond the negativity into the positive presence of God in our life. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us give thanks to God and trust that he will hear our prayers and needs this day. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all nations and peoples will turn away from hate and choose life, respect, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that religious leaders and civil leaders will find the strength 
to value the lives of all people and foster an example of respect as they go about the work of leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television parishioners that will be placed next to the altar, and for Susan Kendrick, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, hear our prayers and respond to them out of your just and merciful love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands with the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all with holy church. O God, who provides gifts to be offered to your name and counts our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as a source of merit may also help to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed humankind in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you for your mighty works through Christ. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all whom you call to the ministry of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we humbly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our good and gracious God bless us this day and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us live in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And thank you all for being with us this Sunday for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. Uh, a special thanks to our friends here at the Immaculate Conception Parish who are always so faithful in helping us to pray and to celebrate almost every Sunday. Uh, a special thanks to Angela Watson Modest, who has filled in for Lacelli these last six weeks. Uh, we're very grateful that you were able to help us and you're always welcome back here at the Sunday Mass. Uh, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we begin the journey of Lent. When we gather next Sunday, it'll be the first Sunday of Lent. If you celebrate Fat Tuesday, have a nice celebration, uh, and have a wonderful week. And until we meet again, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart. was a paid program for Passionist Communications.